Welcome back. This week we're going to go with a Brooks stone. Uh, this is a Charlie Brooks pattern. Uh, it's just an overall general stone fly imitation. Um, I caught the biggest native brookie that I've ever caught on this pattern when I was a kid. I don't even know if I was driving yet. I may have taken a bike all the way up to Bob's Creek. That's an upper end of it. Just a small little creek. Ton of wild brookies. Um, really fun to play around with. But, uh, you know, I thought it was the pattern, so I went home and I tied, I don't know, dozens and dozens of them. And never really fished them a whole lot after that. But, anyhow, classic pattern. Very good pattern to fish. If I were to time for back home, you know, the eastern rivers, streams that have the stone flies, I'd probably time in this size right here. This is a U203 Umqua on a size 8. If I were to time them for out west, I would probably go with a size 6, 4, maybe even a 2. I'd probably put them on a streamer hook. Um, whichever size, just pick something out of the river, match it up to a hook, call it good. Um, this is more along the lines of a suggestive pattern than it is an actual imitation. You tie it and you have the right drift, you're going to catch fish, I guarantee it. Uh, there's just you can tie these a hell of a lot quicker than you will some of the other stone fly nymphs too. Some of them get so complicated that you wind up spending a half hour tying one just to make it look right. It doesn't fish any better than this. Just have a good drift and you're good. Anyhow, we'll get into it. Enough of me BSing. Uh, to start on this one, let me see. That's going to be a distraction. We'll just get that out of the way. To start on this one, we're going to go with some brown goose bots. Just like when we did the Montana Stone, it's been two, maybe three weeks back now, I can't really remember. Help to have some damn thread on there. So, we're going to take these brown goose bots, we're going to turn them against themselves so they just kind of splay out like a like a tail set these on here um, not extremely long not extremely long on this you know probably three quarters of the body and take this right back to where the barb starts its ascent and at that point these tails are going to be going at a downward angle toward the, you know, just following the natural curve on this hook. And that one, there we go, better. That's better. So just go ahead and take this all the way up and we're going to start a taper. It's just the same as always. We're going to take this to the two thirds point, stop our thread, and this is where we want our taper. So at the very beginning, it's going to be slender as we get closer to the thorax, it's going to be thicker. Now this will also help with the taper. This is just a size, a small, I think, yeah, this is size small, not extra small. It'll disappear in the dubbing. Just a small brass wire. So I'm going to take it on this side, go all the way up to the front. And I'll double this over, probably half the way back. And I'll go ahead and trim this. Grab a set of junk scissors. Go ahead and trim that. You can just spin it and break it off too if you want. So this is also helping with the taper. It's very subtle, but it will help. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is grab some dubbing and this is just uh, SLF spiky squirrel dubbing. It's like a dark brown black mix. I don't know, it's, it's almost perfect for, for the color of this stone fly. So we're going to take this And I'm just going to form, I'm not going to throw this in a dubbing loop just yet. I'm going to try and keep this as close to the original as possible. 
So this has a very tight body through the back section and then at the front we get a little a little bulkier, a little bit more loose. So I'm just going to go ahead and dub this just working my way up to the front adding to the taper as I go. Don't make this a real aggressive taper. You can see, I mean, just with that right there, it's not really aggressive. It's a pretty subtle taper, but it's still an effective taper. It's enough to see that there is actually a taper going on there. And I want just a little bit more on this one. And I'll start going into the thorax a little bit. We're going to add to the thorax. So let me get, there we go. We're into the thorax a little bit. So right there's where our taper is going to stop. And then with this, I'm going to bring my brass wire right through here. Just nice even wraps, evenly spaced. Don't put a ton of tension on this and just work it right up through the body. And it's going to start to disappear on me just slightly. Pull tight on that and there we go. Alright, next we're going to tie in our hackles. I have a brown and grizzly hackle. Um, pretty simple. This is regular, you know, neck hackle. Uh, if I were to tie it now, I would probably do it with, with hen. It would just, you know, accept a little bit more water, sink a little bit quicker, whatever it may be. But this is the original, so this is what we will do. Tie the brown in first. This will be the second one that gets wrapped. Bring this up to the front, leaving a little bit of room for your eye. Starting to, you know, work with the taper a little bit. Let me see where we're at here. That's pretty close. Like I said, working with the taper in the thorax. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna go away from, I'm sure what the original was done with, and I'm gonna throw this in a dubbing loop just because I think it'll make it look a little bit better, better, a little pickier. And where's the tool at? There we go. Go ahead and half hitch. Get this out of the way. Throw this in our cradle. grab a generous amount of this. I'm going to try and keep this on the loose side when I throw this in. Make sure we're still showing up all right. It looks good. Could probably have zoomed in a little bit more. That eh, looks all right. We'll see how it comes out on the on the video. Sometimes my monitor isn't very accurate as to what actually shows up on the video. Tricks me. A little so and so. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick this out. I probably have a little bit more than I'm actually going to need. Don't worry about this being absolutely perfect and following with the taper that you have on the back side because we are throwing this hackle in here and that's going to mask it a decent amount. And I'm going to back this off just one wrap, I think, just to leave myself a little bit of hook to work with. Get that out of the way. Now, you can wrap these both at the same time if you want. I'm just going to wrap these by themselves. 
and these are pretty stubby so I'm going to grab my hackle pliers just work this around just kind of get one wrap in front of the next um, not like you're wrapping a dry fly you know a dry fly you want it you know one on top of the other this right here is just one wrap space it another wrap space it till you get up to the eye now I'm going to take the brown and I'm going to go a little bit thicker with this brown so I got four wraps with the grizzly I'll probably do five or six with this brown and I'm going to fill in the gaps that I have with the grizzly so the gaps that I left I'm going to fill in with the brown and I'm going to try and get one or two extra wraps in the front and there we go and peel all your hackles back, tie this off plenty of room to whip finish you want. Um, outside of trimming a couple of these hackle fibers off to make it look a little prettier for the camera, this thing is done. Man, that's not too bad for the first one I tied in who knows how many years the thing looks alright. But there you have it. There it is. I might actually take that one out and fish it. There is a Charlie Brooks stonefly. Like I said, classic pattern. Um, yeah, that one may get a swim out here, believe it or not. I haven't tied one of these forever. That looks pretty good. But um, if you guys have any questions, comments, as always, leave them with me. I'll get back to you. But thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on next week's fly.